Hey, this is the game Triple H from the WWE. You're watching RxMuscle.com, the truth in bodybuilding. Rex Muscles Studios here in New York for another episode of Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm your host, Sadiq Baruki. Glad you can join us on this Tuesday afternoon, 30-minute question and answer with Dave Palumbo. Again, all, all questions regarding training, supplementation, diet. I, I, this happens, Dave. These late nights that I work, I you often have these brain cramps. Anyway, let's get back on track here. Thursday night, special episode of Iron Debate. Now, many of you saw Heavy Muscle TV last week. It was the 100th episode of Heavy Muscle TV. And, of course, that signaled the return of Jimmy the Iron Bull Pelletier. Now, this is the man who has a lot of opinions, and he is not shy to voice his opinions. And we figured what better than to bring him on on a special episode of Iron Debate, Dave, this Thursday night. I'm calling it Iron Bull Debate rather than Iron Debate. And uh, I just want to see, sit, sit as a little, uh, as we say in Yiddish, Meshuganet, Meshuganet, Meshuganet. Because uh, I had him working in the Gulag. I, I told Johnny earlier that we're going to put him, send him to the Gulag in Russia to work to work in the enslavement camps there. And I think uh, Sid just got off his shift. But I am excited. You know, Jimmy the Bull Pelletia was so popular on this past week's 100th anniversary episode of the Heavy Muscle Show that uh, a lot of people said, we want more. We want more of him. I said, you know what? The guy's got opinions. He's out of his slump. He's not depressed anymore. We got him on here Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. He'll be debating Chris Aceto, John Romano, and myself. And uh, I guarantee you, Jimmy the Bull will have some very strong opinions. Just to give you a preview, we are going to rip, well, I mean, he's going to rip. We're going to talk about the selfie culture. The selfie culture that now permeates gyms across America and which has turned the most hardcore of hardcore gyms into what we see today before us. Jimmy the Bull has very strong opinions on that, and we are going to be entertained by it. 7.30, Thursday night, Eastern Standard Time, right here on rxmuscle.com. Once again, 30-minute question and answer with Dave Palumbo. You can join us on the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com, on our Instagram page, instagram.com slash official underscore rxmuscle, or official Facebook page, and Twitter page by using hashtag ask. Dave. Let's go to the first question. Brian Gator. Dave, I hate this show so much, I'd rather strip naked and sit on hot coals while listening with one ear to sit explaining to me how he can work for a bodybuilding show but never feel any compulsion to work out. And with the other ear, listen to George Farris screaming at Aceto about how gay he is while simultaneously explaining why he, Aceto, would have never qualified to be a part of the police task force which he, Farah, headed. There was no question there. But that was an epic I hate. Good job. Reminder, the best I hate this show is going to get nitrilized pre-workout by Species Nutrition. The best overall question of the show, we used to do this at the top when we used to start this contest, is going to get a Species Nutrition gym bag. We move on to Monstro. Hopefully he has a question. I hate this show so much because every day I go to bed trying to have sex with my wife she is watching the show, and I completely lose my libido. <laughs> That's Pretty strong. Good. Dear Dave, how can I spot the differences between high and low estrogen because the symptoms are very identical? Um, well, low estrogen is uh, usually gotten from people who take too many aromatase inhibitors. Too much Arimidex, too much Femara, too much Aromacin, and... Uh, the symptoms can be low sex drive. Uh, usually you can't get such a great pump. Um, those are pretty standard, okay? Sometimes you can't grow. People who, take, who have too much estrogen, the symptoms are way different. Yes, um, you might have a uh, lack of sex drive, but usually when you have high estrogen, you have a, a very good sex drive. Um, usually you're more water retentive. You're going to hold a lot of fluid under the skin you're going to have more fat on your lower body, like the hips and thighs. Um, you might have nipple and uh, a scent tenderness because of uh, gynecomastia being uh, you know, produced there. So the high estrogen uh, effects are way more prevalent. Usually the low estrogen effects, are, people don't realize it because they're like, well, I have no side effects. I just don't, I just don't feel right or I just don't have a sex drive. 
and and once again a lot of times low estrogen is really not low estrogen it's high prolactin because prolactin will kill your sex drive too and that's caused by obviously high trembolone and, and deca usage and not in everyone there are guys that can use tons of deca and tons of tremble and get no side effects so once again the only way to truly truly verify what's going on in your body is to go for blood work get your testosterone check get your estrogen check get your prolactin check get your cortisol check all right, Dave, before I ask this next question, did you make any mention of Dora the Explorer on a radio show or any previous episodes? I don't even know who he is, to tell you the truth. You don't know Dora the Explorer? No. The cartoon character? No. no okay, person. because a couple of weeks ago, I didn't ask a question, but somebody wanted you to just say Dora the Explorer in, quote, Dave Palumbo accent. So I didn't know maybe you brought up some sort of a mention in a previous episode. No, I didn't. All right, so Dave, your show, this is from Danny Almeida. Yeah. Dave, your show is so bad and useless. I would rather dumb myself down and watch and learn from Dora the Explorer instead. I can't believe you've never heard of Dora the Explorer. Do you ever recall in the past on Bodybuilding.com about an undercover pro who wrote real and raw articles about the sport of bodybuilding? If so, can you speculate who you thought the pro was and whether they were accurate about what they wrote? Also, he wants to know about promotion codes and discount codes. Danny Almeida will certainly send those out to you. You know, first of all, no one, unless I had the article in front of me and we were reading some of the articles, I don't even, I don't know, remember which ones he's talking about. The only articles I remember on bodybuilding.com was from the late Nasser El Sambadi who wrote some crazy scathing articles. Most of what he wrote was, was lies and fabrications to be super sensationalistic, but that was Nasser. And I really don't want to badmouth him at all because, you know, he's not with us anymore. And he was a friend at one point with, to me. Who the undercover pro was right now, I, I, I don't even know. I have no idea. Let's go to Weedle Juice. Hi, Dave. I've just come off PEDs to conceive and plan on staying off until I get the job done. Sperm count was low as to be expected. Tested at the very end of a cycle, very end of a cycle before starting any form of PCT. Would it be better to taper Clomid down to a low dose and come off, or just stay at the low dose Clomid 25 mg? My partner was diagnosed with. Uh, PCOS, so I don't really want to maintain an aggressive protocol for what may end up being a substantial amount of time. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't even know what the question is. He wants to know how much clomid he should be on? Yeah, that's... Um, I always no. recommend, post-cycle, I always recommend about two weeks of HCG at 2,000 units every third day and 50 to 100 milligrams of clomid um, uh, for two to three weeks. Um, per day. Now, some people do have some some clomid effects. They call it. You know, it's like the uh, they feel depressed. They feel a little. Uh, they 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 get a, an estrogenic type of uh, reaction uh, to it. And so those people, you know, what I tell people, don't even use it if that's the case. Use Nolvidex or Tamoxifen at 10 milligrams twice a day instead of clomid uh, for your PCT, and that'll solve your problem. This question thank from you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's my nice little somebody voice. Thank you very much. Question from Dorian21. Hello, Dave and Sadiq. I hate this show. I'd rather improve my English grammar and pronunciation with George Farah instead of watching this crappy show. My question is, what happened to, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce his last name correct, to Jean-Pierre, is it Few or Fuchs. Fuchs? This guy was huge and he's kind of disappeared after his last show in New York. Well, Jean-Pierre Fuchs, for those of you who don't remember, uh, was doing a photo shoot with the uh, with Chris Lund, who used to be uh, one of the the ace photographers for Flex Magazine. I've shot with him, and Chris Lund's deal is that he loves to shoot real weights. He feels that it, it projects a better um, feel for the picture. It looks more hardcore. Uh, I remember when I was going to do a photo shoot in 1996 with him after the Nationals, and he's, he tried to get me to uh, bench press the uh, the. 200 pound dumbbells in each arm and I said I don't even do that when I'm not when I'm not dieting I said he said, well Jay Cutler did it I said well Jay Cutler's nuts because Jay Cutler was was a young guy he was I think he was like 20 years old at the time I said he's just young and dumb for doing that in the photo shoot anyway flash forward 10 years later whatever it was and John Pierre Fuchs was getting ready for a big pro show and Chris Lund convinced him to squat seven plates on each side almost 700 pounds and going down with the weight, he actually he tore one quad, and then when the weight transferred to the other leg, he tore the other quad. And Chris Lund didn't even stop; he kept shooting away as he fell to the floor. And if you if you remember those pictures, you probably can Google them online. You can see how Fuchs's legs just gave out from under him. And then obviously he had a, so he had a double quad tear, uh, had them both fixed, and was never the same after that. And I think he just realized he couldn't be the athlete he was before the the quad tear. You're watching Ask Dave on RxMuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Again, the best I hate this show gets nitrilized pre-workout by Species Nutrition. The best 
overall question will get a species gym bag. We now go to our Facebook questions. Our official Facebook page is facebook.com slash rxmuscle.com, all one word. We go to Lucas Ritkowski. Dave, love your show. What are your thoughts on lex- laxogenin? And in parentheses, 5A hydroxy laxogenin. Do you see benefits on taking it while cutting building muscle? No. It's a waste of money. Save your money. Let's go to Dion Iliev. Hey, Dave, your show makes me DNP sick. Why do we need carbs on off days if the only thing we need to build muscles is fat and protein? Why do pros eat them every day and in big quantities no matter if it is training or non-training day? Wouldn't it be okay just to have some uh, breakfast to fuel your normal day activities, then proceed with keto since we won't be needing any fuel for a heavy workout? You know, most people don't understand the concept, but when you, you're in the gym and you're depleting glycogen, and then post-workout, you know, you take your post-workout shake or whatever it is, you go home and eat a big carb meal, you don't replace glycogen, all the depleted glycogen, in one meal. It doesn't have, it takes, it takes meals and meals and hours and hours and hours to fully replace what you depleted while you're working out. And remember, there's an afterburn, too. After you get out of the gym, you're still burning accelerated calories, okay, because it, what happens is the body's metabolism gets hyped while it's in the gym. Um, granted, also, if you do cardio after that, that's going to hype your metabolism even more. So, you know, people always ask me, shouldn't I eat less food on days I don't train? No, those are the days your body's recovering. And I understand the concept. I'm the one who always points out that protein and fat builds muscle. But once again, if you're not eating enough fuel to fuel your body, the carbs, okay, your body will invariably take some of that protein and fat and use that as the fuel. And we don't want that because now your body doesn't have enough protein and fat to build and repair muscles. So um, you got to figure out what your threshold amount of carbs you require is. Some people need more. Some people need less. And I like to keep the carbs pretty consistent in the offseason unless the person happens to get fat real easy, in which case I might alternate days, one day a higher carb, one day a lower carb. And, and, I, and I basically basically base that depending on who the person is and through my experience with working with them. Uh, but I like to start people out with a consistent amount of carbs every day. If you vary your carbs every day right from the beginning, you're not going to know what's working and what's not. So it's good to do give your body consistent levels of food, consistent levels of drugs, consistent levels of training, and then tweak the variables as you go along. Let's go to a good friend of the show, Peter Cowdell. Dave, what are your thoughts on potassium load, sodium deplete before a show? Once again, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Don't do kooky things before a show. When you start messing with electrolytes, you're looking for trouble, okay? Big trouble, okay? Don't screw with potassium and sodium. Eat potassium. Don't eat as much salt as you want the whole diet. Cut it out the day before. Put it back in the day of the show. It's so simple. Don't touch any other electrolytes. Use a diuretic that doesn't deplete deplete potassium like diazide. And guess what? You're not going to have any problems. You don't have to guess. You don't have to pray and, and, and hope that the protocol works. It will work. The less you do, the better you're going to look on stage consistently. Let's go again to Dion Iliev. Hey, Dave, your show is crap. What's with Mark Lobliner making fun of your fat loading theories? He loves to make fun of the stuff you once said about m- mixing waxy maize with macadamia nut oil for pre-workout. I've stumbled upon many people who actually don't take fats as serious as you. Even Chris Cito in his fam- famous book uh, says he does not recommend any additional fats. Jay Cutler was a big carb eater, never said anything about fat. He was like 1,000 grams on normal carb intake and barely 250 grams of protein. I wonder how he was able to build muscle in such a small amount. Is it the industry that made us believe that we need all this protein? Now, he has like another paragraph here. Let's just go with, and then he goes, P.S., invite Mark for a guru dance with you live. Everyone will be watching. Um, you know, I think it, a lot of people just have this ignorance uh, out there, and, you know, people put their head in the sand. Jay Cutler ate more than 250 grams of protein today. I can guarantee you that. And you know what? Most pros who don't say they eat direct sources of, co- of fats, and most incorporate fats nowadays, but the ones that don't eat so much protein – Think about Kai Green. Kai Green eats 1,000 grams of protein a day. How much fat do you think is in that, in that protein he's eating? Probably 250 grams, okay? So everyone's getting fat indirectly from the protein source that they're consuming. My, my belief and my, what I try to educate people on is don't, don't leave your fat intake to chance. When I say to chance, if you're getting your fat indirectly from your protein, you're leaving it to chance. We know how much 
essential fats, the polyunsaturated fats we need. We know how much monounsaturated fats your body needs, and we know how much saturated, or at least I've given enough knowledge out there that you guys should know this. So you might as well put strategically put the fats in there, eat a little less protein if, you know, than, than having to go up to five, 600 grams a day, put less stress on your body to have to deaminate all that extra protein that you're not using, and guess what? Now you have a strategic targeted diet that's specifically geared towards your physique. Every, now, granted, people will need less and more protein, less and more fat, and less and more carbs, depending on what their metabolism is, how big they are, you know, what their genetics are. You know, that, that's, that's why coaching is so important. But you know, to, to, to foo-foo things that you don't know anything about is just pure ignorant. And, I, and I'll be happy to debate anyone, including Mark, anytime he wants on these topics. My pre-workout recommendations, and they still stand to this day, is, a, is, a, is I like to use a shake prior to going to the gym. At least, I, I always enjoy it. I know guys that eat food. I don't like to have anything coming up at me, especially when I'm doing legs. My pre-workout shake originally was uh, a whey isolate with my carbolized formula. And before I had my carbolized, I used to use waxy maize. And, it's, and basically a high molecular weight carbohydrate. Now what I found was because the stuff gets absorbed so quickly into the bloodstream, I would get crashes in blood sugar while I was training. So what I found is if I put a, an oil, whether it be extra virgin olive oil, which tastes like crap, or macadamia nut oil, which I'm a big advocator of, obviously. I'm such a big advocator that I sell the stuff. When I mixed a tablespoon of that into the, into the carbolized and the isolized, it delayed the absorption of it into the bloodstream. But because it didn't need to be digested per se, because it was already in a liquid form, it didn't, di it didn't delay it too much. So it enabled me to get a steady trickle of nutrients into my bloodstream while I was training without getting the burps you get from having food. Uh, why anyone would think it's, that's not a good idea, I'm open to debating them on that, okay? I truly am. As a pre-workout, now I wouldn't recommend that post-workout. Post-workout, there's no fat in there because we want the protein and, and carbs to get in rapidly to re-glycogenate the muscles and to start the protein machinery process and, of repair for the muscles going. So once again, I'm, I'm, I, I'm very, very confident in all my science and I'm happy to debate anyone anytime. We go to Rob Starr. Now, Johnny, our producer, what we need on this show is we need some sort of a music bed for when Rob Starr or someone chimes in with a poem or last week it was a <laughs> Jack and Jill. So next episode, so Mark, so you'll be ready and Rob Starr we got to get ready. the instant replay machine that they use on the Howard Stern show so he's got sound effects there. <laughs> all right, so Rob Starr goes... Roses are red, violets are blue. Who is your daddy, and what does he do? Hashtag Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hashtag what movie? Um, oh, killing me! <laughs> Kindergarten cop! Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, so disappoint you. <laughs> Dave, if you are eating a fatty fish like salmon once a day, would you still recommend using a fish oil supplement, or is this a waste of money? I would definitely use the fish oil supplement because most people who eat salmon every day don't eat wild salmon. They eat farm-raised salmon, which doesn't have a hell of a lot of, ome of omega-3 fats. Plus, you know what? Keep the always keep an essential fatty acid supplement in there as an insurance policy. You know, you, when I say take three grams of, of omega-3 fish oil a day, okay, that doesn't mean that that's all you need per day. That means that that's the basic bare bones minimum. A little more is actually better. So if you can get some more from the omega-3 eggs you eat, if you can get a little bit more from maybe some of the uh, uh, wild-caught fish you're eating uh, or, or even grass-fed beef, then that's great. But at least have that baseline minimum from your essential fatty acid supplement, a supplement like Omega Lies. We go to James Wurzenberg. Is fiber beneficial for people with colitis or IBS? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. Um, the great thing about fiber is that if you go too frequently, it slows you down. If you don't go frequently enough, it speeds you up. It regulates you. That's, that's fiber regulates your, your bowel movements. Go to Joe Kells. Dave, I hate your show so much. I'd rather, listen, rather let Vinny the Chin take out my sister for dinner and drinks <laughs> than listen to another second of you and Sid. Anyway, here's my question. I'm a baseball player and recently tore my labrum. I'm still able to function as far as hitting, but the injury has taken a toll on my arm strength. Do you think taking four IUs of growth hormone along with physical therapy will help speed up the recovery process and get me ready for the spring? Also, any opinions on spot injecting the growth around the area rather than into the stomach? Well, first, let's start off with how growth hormone works. Growth hormone, once it gets into the bloodstream, which means it doesn't work locally, uh, 
has a, a direct fat burning effect. And then when the growth hormone is degraded by the liver, the liver liberates another hormone known as IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, which then institutes or inst instigates growth or repair, especially of connective tissue. So injecting GH into the joint is not going to do anything, okay, because it has to go to the liver so the liver can release IGF-1. Likewise, even if you had IGF-1 and injected it into the joint area, it's going to get into the bloodstream first before it goes and circulates to the joint. So spot injecting any of those compounds won't do anything okay um taking four ius of gh is probably too much okay when you're re recovering from an injury you you want to take just enough that's going to heal but not as much that's going to cause inflammation and, and stress on, on, on and, and stretching out that that joint area because they just repaired it so i would take two ius of gh i would take three thousand units of vitamin c a day i would take arthrolyze five pills twice a day to get get enough a high potency uh, dosage of glucosamine sulfate and MSM, and I would take V mineralized to make sure I get all the essential minerals that my body requires to help repair and, and, and assist in that repair of the joint and connective tissue. Let's go to Gil or uh, Gail Vega. This show is worse than my bathroom episodes during Dave's cleanse protocol. <laughs> what happened to Dexter Jackson's blade nutrition? I don't know. I hear Dexter's with the Universal Nutrition now, so I guess it's uh, I guess it's kaput. Uh, you know, look, there's a lot. Look, the, the problem with the industry today is that there's too many companies, and Dexter doesn't have the time to run a nutrition company. He's he's still competing and making good money. Um, he's better off not having his own company. That's why I think I talked to Phil Heath about this. Phil is involved in running his company. I don't know how the hell he he does all his appearance and and also gets ready for the Olympia with that going on. And it's very difficult to run a company. I waited till I re retired to start my company. I know Jay Cutler, same thing. Ronnie Coleman waited. It's very difficult to do while you're competing. So I can understand why Dexter would, you know, forego the company and, and, and sign with someone else. Dave, this from uh, Dion Ilyev again. Dave, I hate this show so much. I'd rather force feed Rami Donuts pre-contest dressed up like a shake. Oh, wait, that's DJ's part, LOL. <laughs> Hey, Dave, I just finished my second ever competition, this time with a medal, second place after the absolute champion and the best bodybuilder in the Bulgarian classic division. My question is, I plan to stop the gear for the first time in a very long time. I'll be doing PCT as soon as the gear wears off. Do you think it'll be beneficial in terms of better gains afterward or cruising on low doses till January is better? One more question, because this time around I'm going to use growth uh, for my off season, should I split it when I'm using more than four IUs? And do you think I should have two days off? I read that if I have two days off or not following two days, uh, it'll lessen or it won't lessen the effects. I already forgot the first part of the question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first part is this he is plans to stop the gear for the first time in a very long time. Oh, I, I, yeah. yeah. He wants to have a shit cruise. Never cruise. I hate that word cruise and bridging and all this stuff. When you go off, go off completely. Do your PCT and then stay off for six to eight weeks on nothing. Zero. Zero. I mean, at the very least, if you want to stay on a little GH, that's fine. I would suggest nothing. Okay? Then when you go back on, you'll be your body will, number one, be detoxed, which is important. All those toxins out of your body. And number two, your receptors will be much more receptive to growth now. So you got to come off, you got to take some steps back to take steps forward. That's just the way it goes in life and with anabolic steroids. That's for certain. The second part of the question was about. Oh, we got to go back to the question now. Um, should we just move on to the next one? No, I, what's I, the second part? I, of all right, let me, I'll pull it up real quick. Well, while he's doing that, maybe I will entertain you guys with a little NASA Ursa Buddy impression. <laughs> Uh, you know, hey, thank you very much, Dave Palumbo, for this knowledge. I, I understand that you would take mm. 10,000 units of GH, and now I remember the question. The question is, uh, if, if I were to take over four <laughs> IUs of GH, should I split the injections up? And I would say, yes, because Palumbo, he would take 28 IUs a day. And, uh, <laughs> now you're going I, even though, <laughs> I'm, I'm morphing my, uh, my, my um, impression. Now, if you're going to take more than four IUs a day, like six, do three and three. If you're going to take four, take four in the morning. That's usually the way. I, I, I don't recommend taking over four or five IUs, but if you go over that five mark, split it up. You're watching Ask Steve on RSMuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Again, best I hate this show gets nitrilized by pre-workout. Best overall question gets a species nutrition gym bag. We will be contacting the winners 
after the show. We now go to our Instagram questions. Again, you can follow us on Instagram, official underscore RX Muscle. And we go to J Ryan 460 Dave, this show sucks. I recently heard PJ Braun on PVW Radio say that his dissatisfaction working with you is one of the main reasons he decided to become a coach. I would like you to respond. I don't know what he's dissatisfied with working me and from in what capacity. Um, not sure. Um, but I will say this before I answer the question. You guys, I, I noticed that we get questions on Instagram. We get questions tweeted to us. We get questions on Facebook. We get questions on the live stream. Like that button below you. Like it. Like it. I want to see fan support. We do this tirelessly and effortlessly every week. Uh, please like us. All right. Having said that, begging for likes. Um, get back to the PJ. I don't know what PJ is referring to, to be honest with you. I gave, I was his first coach. I taught him most of what he knows. Uh, hopefully he took it and, and used it. He became a very successful coach after that. I even told him, and, and he knows this. I said to him, look, if you never win a, your pro card, who cares? I said, you'll always make money in this industry. You have a pers good personality. You're a knowledgeable guy. I said, you're, you're marketable. And I said, that's why, and that's why he was my species nutrition athlete. I paid him money. He was probably one of the highest paid guys I ever paid uh, in the history of species. And that was because that, you know, I thought he was marketable. And I think he still is. And obviously, he took a lot of that knowledge. And he's, he, he used his own insights he had and his own instincts, and he's making a lot of money now. So I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about PJ. I don't know why we would badmouth me for it, but you know what? That's that's up to him. I don't care. I, I don't have a bad word to say about him. Let's go to Deli Yoglu. Hello, Dave. Does slow-acting injectables have the potential to strain the liver? How high can we go in MG per week without any fear? Also, fast-acting injectables versus slow-acting injectables on liver strain. Well, the longer the acting injectable the less uh, liver strain because if a injectable goes through the liver and has to leave the body quickly that means the liver has to work harder to break it down something that trickles into the bloodstream over a very long period of time the liver has a much easier time breaking that down that's why orals are so damaging because they go through the liver twice once through the digestive tract and then as they're in the bloodstream and have to be broken down they go through the liver again and orals only last about 24 hours in the bloodstream, so they have to be broken down even quicker. So the shorter the acting compound, the more stress on the liver. That's why I usually recommend longer acting compounds like tascipionate, enanthate, um, uh, equipoise, um, anything that lasts a long time in the body is going to be less deca is going to be less stressful to the liver long term. Let's go to t -t 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 bigger underscore leaner. I hate this show so much. I'd rather switch to Lee Thompson's Inspire Division and get my pro card by competing against Jason Genova, only to sell out on eBay for money to be trained by George Farah. In your experience, how long does it take to see benefits from HEH? Most forums suggest six months. You'll see benefits from GH in one shot. Okay, you may not notice it, but you'll see your body will see benefits from it. The reason why people say you don't really see the benefits for six months, and I noticed this when I, I took the first time I took it, I did about two or three months of it. I went off of it, and I didn't. And then, like six months later, I said, "Hey, I'm still growing. What the hell's going on? Is this stuff still working?" And I've mentioned this before, and I've explained this this process before. What happens is you produce new muscle tissue taking growth hormone, but the new muscle cells that you produce are very small, and and they're they're not negligible essentially. Over the course of six months, as you train and eat right, those cells start to blow up and inflate. So even though you might have produced this, the new cell six months earlier, you don't really see the benefit of the new cell or, the, or, or what it's produced for you know, six months to a year later when the cell grows. It's like, it's like producing baby snakes. They don't really look huge until they've eaten and gotten a couple meals in them and, 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 and blown up. And then you're like, oh my God, I got a lot of snakes here. So um, same thing with muscle cells. When the muscle cells are immature and small, you don't notice them. When they get bigger, all of a sudden you're like, wow, where did this come from? Time for a couple of more questions. This one from Do uh, Damon Cat 91 Dave, I hate this show so much. I would rather listen to Bader Budai recite Shakespearean English while eating my 500 grams of cars prescribed by George Farah. What are your recommendations for oral anabolic? <laughs> I'm trying to picture that. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow your recommendations for oral anabolics such as winstrol or anivar for example how long you should run it and at what dose would you consider safe and how many orals can you run at once look 
if you're only running Winstrel and Anivar, okay, then you probably could do it 16 weeks and not have a problem because they're really not super toxic orals. They're not like a a Dianabol and, and Anadrol. Um, if you're taking them in conjunction with other injectables, you I wouldn't recommend taking them that long, maybe six to eight weeks, you know, in, in length. So it depends on number one, the dosage of what you're taking, and number two, what you're taking with the stuff. And you know, once again, you can't give a blanket answer on that. Let's go to Lincoln Park Muscle. Can an NPC slash IFBB competitor, in your opinion, get in trouble for associating with an NSL athlete on social media? I, I don't think I don't think anyone gives a crap to be honest with you who's interacting with who. But uh, obviously, if if you go to a social media web page uh, that's run by another organization and you start liking their pictures and 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 saying "Go team," you know that's going to show that your loyalty is with the other organization. So that's probably not a good idea. Um, if you're on there watching what's going on, I don't think anyone gives a crap. You know, so it all comes down to who you're supporting. You know, and. Look, I don't, I don't blame Jim Mannion and, and the IFBB. You know, if a new organization comes out, I, you know, I'm going to see who's on my side and I want to see who's on their side, and that's that's just that's just human nature. Um, you know, it's like you know, do you want to give a uh, a Russian spy access to the U.S. top secret you know documents? No, of course not. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask Dave. Reminder tomorrow, rather Thursday afternoon. We're going to have live with Sandra Blockman, who goes for a pro card in about a week and a half. And then, of course, Thursday night, 7.30, an all-new episode of Iron Debate. We're going to have Jimmy the Iron Bull Pelletia and all that he's got to say on the world of bodybuilding and fitness. For Johnny Styles and Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Farooqui. Have a good day.